Everything any mom or any parent normally would have was stolen from me. Sonia Kopalekia's first year as a mother was a living nightmare. What was supposed to be the most beautiful time of my life was the most painful and lonely. First, her baby's father walked out. What am I going to do to tell her that her dad walked out on her the day she turned six months old? Then his mother's twisted complaints landed her in jail. I felt like I was going to die in that place. But the worst was yet to come. She was obsessed with her only granddaughter, Camelia. Detectives say it's a case of she said, she said, pitting Grandma Helen Gruning against Sonia Kopalekia, the mother of her granddaughter, Camelia. And the war of words left Sonia behind bars and Camelia in the custody of Grandma Helen, at least temporarily. In boxing terms, I guess they won the first round. But the grandma's winning streak ran out. Sonia was now free. And she was more than ready to fight to regain custody of her child. Now, obviously, just Sonia wasn't going to stay in jail forever. At the time of Sonia's release, doctors were starting to become suspicious of Grandma Helen, who constantly brought Camelia to hospitals, claiming she suffered from shaken baby syndrome. Is this at the point where hospital officials are looking at Helen and saying perhaps she has the Munchausen by proxy syndrome and these things are all made up? Yes. The constant doctor visits eventually lead to a disturbing discovery. She's a toddler. They gave her, forced her to take a psychotropic drug. According to Sonia, Camilla had been given a prescription drug used to treat epilepsy and bipolar disorder. I remember going to visit her and she couldn't hold her little head up. Like, I stood there and I couldn't even help her. My baby could have died from kidney failure, and these people were willing to let her die rather than see me. That's when Camilla's father and grandmother also lost custody of the little girl. So at that point, then the child is put back into protective custody and then is, is taken from one foster home to another foster home. The only way Sweet Pea's mother, father, or grandmother could see her was during supervised visits. Part of the other thing to break me was they had me have an armed guard at all times, as if I would kill her. Then, a few weeks before Sweet Pea's third birthday, it looked like things were finally going Sonia's way. Sonia was going to get custody with Derek having visitation rights. At Christmas, I thought, finally, I'm going to get to be with my I bet finally I could take her to the nativity scene. But Helen Gruning was seemingly just gearing up for round two, working out a twisted plot to abduct her granddaughter and flee. This was all premeditated. Um, and when I say premeditated, I'm talking like months, even maybe a year prior to the abduction. Detectives say Helen Gruning masterminded the plan involving the child's father to kidnap Camilla during one of their supervised visits. Derek started befriending people at the Department of Children's Services and asked if he could have a visit with his daughter outside the office. The department agreed, but insisted it still be monitored. Five days before Christmas in 1999, Derek met Camilla at an arcade just a few miles from the home he shared with his mother. Derek was already there. There was gifts on the table for Camelia. Derek asked the monitor if he could take Camelia to play one of the arcade games, and she said, sure. At some point, uh, according to the monitor, she dropped a pen or pencil, and when she looked up, Derek and Camelia was gone. Outside the park, detectives believe Grandma Helen was waiting behind the wheel of the getaway car. The monitor ran out and was frantic looking for the little girl, but they had already left. When deputies arrived minutes later, there was no sign of the trio. Stunningly, almost 20 years later, they have never been found. This was a planned abduction slash kidnapping. Detective Steve Lankford of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office searched the home Helen and Derek shared and was shocked at what he found inside. Everything was gone. There's just a couple boxes. An abduction so sophisticated, it looked like the work of a gangster, not a grandmother. Maybe six months prior to the abduction, uh, she goes to a financial institution and she borrows on the house and, and gets, I think, around $180,000.
Detectives say that's the money Helen and Derek used to fund their getaway. And Helen went to great lengths to make sure she'd never be found by the bank or anyone else. You have to give a thumbprint to get notarized for the money, receiving the money. Every time Helen would do it, she would purposely smudge her thumbprint. Because Helen had never been arrested, her fingerprints weren't on file, and she planned to keep it that way. With cash in hand, Helen moved to the next part of her plan. Everything was all calculated, knowing that she was gonna disappear. Five days before the abduction, three passports arrived by mail. One for Helen, Derek, and one for Helen's mother, Gertrude. All three also stopped by the post office to stop their mail. When I interviewed the uh, individual at the post office, he remembers uh, Gertrude saying something about they were traveling to Europe, they were gonna go to Europe. Though Gertrude was born in Europe, the family has no ties there. Those passports could have been a, a, a ploy to think that they left the United States. But in fact, they may have moved to the East Coast. Detective Langford learned that Helen has a brother who lives in Florida. After a few weeks, he'd finally tracked him down. I go, you haven't heard from your sister in almost a month, and you never called the authorities to file a missing persons report? And he goes, no. If Helen's friends know where she's now living, they also aren't talking. The friends would say, this is a shock to us that, that Helen did this, but if she did it, it was for the benefit of the little girl. Everybody was in on it. Right. The only person who admits hearing from the fugitives is Helen's doctor friend. She says a year after the abduction, a letter from Derek arrived at her office. It was basically uh, a letter saying goodbye and thank you for everything that you've done for us and you'll probably you'll never hear from us again if she's still alive today camellia sweet pea spencer would have turned 20 years old in january for now her heartbroken mother is left with only memories my daughter and i will never get back her childhood these age progression photos show what she might have looked like growing up. Detectives say the pictures have led to hundreds of tips over the years, but none have led them to Camellia. There are still arrest warrants out for Derek and Helen. Both are wanted fugitives and should be considered armed and dangerous. Do you think you will see your daughter again? You know, my faith has made me feel that God's not going to let this just go. God is not going to let these people get away with this. Now it's time for you to help this family. We put a picture of Camellia at the time of her disappearance and what she might look like now on our website, CrimeWatchDaily.com. You'll also see pictures of her alleged abductors, Derek Spencer and Helen Gruning. If you know anything about where they might be, you can click on Submit a Tip or call the LA County Sheriff's Hotline. That number is 1-323-890-5500.